Hello, here we go. So we are going through paper 2B today. Um, the exam is tomorrow, uh, 24th of May, 2023. So hopefully these videos will provide useful. I'm gonna go through uh, one video per question just to make sure that I'm not rushing it. Um, so here we go, question one. I've put, I've put off doing this paper, it's 2018. Um, it's just wordy, it's so very, very wordy. I've used the snipping tool to break this one down a little bit. So we've got question 1A, UK population was 65 million in June 2016. What percentage of the population correct to one decimal place were eligible voters for the EU referendum? So the eligible voters was 46 million, um, 500,000 and one, bit of a weird number, and that's going to be divided by 65 million. And then our outcome from that, we also need to times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage, is 0.715384, which when we multiply it by 100 is 71.53, and that's 71.5, so that's our first mark. Okay, question 1B. Um, one improvement that could be made to each graph in the preliminary material would be to label the axes, suggest two other improvements that could be made to each graph. So the first graph is the EU immigration, uh, which is up here. So having a look at this one, we've got actual population projection, net letter with low net migration, with zero net migration. Um, one thing here is, is this is not very clearly labeled. So we've got M that probably needs to come out here. And I understand that that stands for millions. So that's my first one. I'm not going to go back and write these. I'm just going to talk you through them. So I feel that on the Y axis, millions could be clearly labeled and stand out from the values. Um, the second thing I can see is I'd extend all of these curves out to 2045, or I just wouldn't include that projection there. I'd just get rid of it. Now I've got the mark scheme open. That's That's just a couple of things that that I've seen. Um, they suggest a broken axis as well to show that this has been scrunched down because normally graphs should start at the origin at zero, zero. Um, so we should show that these have been uh, scrunched in. Um, it says add a line for high net migration. So we've got zero, low. Uh, we could have high net migration to add extra bit of data. So that's from the mark scheme. Okay, so question 1B is done. Graph two, we need to look at the Brexit's impact on the pound. So that's this graph here. This is quite complicated. And for me, I'm not really too sure what some of these things actually mean. So I'd indicate what nicer and awkward mean. What, what exactly do they stand for? Okay. And then also, we've got quite, a, quite an important topic. We've only got four sort of sources, four areas. So we'd add more organizations, I think organizations we could add some grid lines across so add grid lines um, from what i've seen on the mark scheme and i'll read a few out it says use a key it says use lines points rather than bars um, add a space between each column just come up with something and put it down just put up an idea you never know if you're not sure if there's nothing clear and obvious put an idea in and you you will hopefully pick up something for your knowledge okay for 2015 the uk paid the EU, 14.6 billion um, during the campaign. Just want to write this down. I've just noticed the time. I haven't got long before break time finishes for me. Um, it says, during the campaign, Vote Leave claimed the EU cost the UK over 350 million every week. Is Vote Leave's claim justified? So this is going to be divided by 52 because that's the annual amount. And then we divide that by 52 to find out what the weekly amount was. It's... Uh, that's let me write this correctly, 280769230.8. So that's oh, it's rounded to 281 million. So no, the claim isn't justified. No, the claim is not justified as it is less than 350 million. Okay, I'm just gonna change pen color. I'm feeling it's a bit harder to see the rainbow today. Right, question 1D. Can I move down? Probably not. Scroll it down. Right, many people made comments on social media about the referendum. Here are three of the comments. Um, it says using the table on page two of the preliminary material, check the validity of these comments. So the table that we're looking at is up here. I'm gonna, I've only got like three minutes to go. I'm just gonna quickly go through um, 
my answers and pop them on for you. You can obviously pause the video and have a go when you want to. Uh, so Tim's comment, nearly 20% of eligible voters didn't vote in the EU referendum. So for Tim, we've got three, three, five, seven, seven, three, zero, two over four, six, five, zero, zero, uh, zero, zero, one. Now that's all of the eligible voters and people who voted. Um, once we work that out and times it by 100, we get 72.21%. So that's the percentage of people that did vote. So the percentage of those that were eligible and didn't vote is 27.79%. And when he says nearly 20%, it's not nearly, it's quite a bit over it. It's almost 8% over it. So his valid is not validity. So that's not a valid claim. Okay, next bit. Hopefully I've got it up here somewhere. I don't seem to have it snipped. Nightmare. That's okay. I've got the paper somewhere else. So we can just finish it off here. Question paper. Right, so Kelly's comment. So for Kelly, um, Kelly said the ratio of remain votes to leave votes is close to 12 to 13. So we've got one, six, one, four, one, two, four, one. Uh, and then that's to one, seven, four, one, zero, seven, four, two. And then what I've done is I've done that number divided by 12, which gives me one, three, four, five, one, zero, three, point four, one, seven. And then that number is the 17 million is divided by that so that we could work out whether it's 12 to what and it's 12 to 12.94379, which means yes, that's a valid claim because it's very close. Right, Larissa's last comment and then we've got to finish the video. If 2 million of those who didn't vote at all had voted to remain, uh, remain, remain in the EU, remain would have won with over 51% of the votes. So we add that 2 million to the amount of votes that voted remain. We add 2 million to the total amount of votes, which is that there, that's the bell, got to finish this off. And then we multiply it by 100, that comes through and gives us 50.99. Um, for me, it's a false claim, uh, as it is not above 51% It's only just below. Right, I hope this video is useful. I'm going to try and get another one out for lunch, finish the paper off after school, try and do a little bit more this evening. Good luck with your exams. Please spread the word. Subscribers always help. Please stay subscribed. Please watch the videos and I'll be ever so grateful. Um, thank you very much. Good luck and I'll see you next lesson.